Hey everyone, it's Javi here and in this video we're going to briefly go over the differences between groups and frames in Figma and I'll tell you why I personally never use groups to manage my layers. If you happen to be new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles and practices to help you build digital products and bring your ideas to life. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos like this one. So. Without further ado, let's jump into our Figma file for this video. I made a very simple one just to go over the differences between grouping and framing layers in Figma. So I'm just gonna drop myself there on the bottom left to not bother you with the view. And yeah, what you can essentially see here are three layers, right? We have an ellipse or a circle, we have a triangle and a rectangle. And essentially what I wanna do now is I want to go ahead and group these. I want a way for me to basically put all of these together into a single layer that I can manage. And in Figma, there's essentially two ways to do that right now. One of them is groups. So I can put all three of these layers into a single group or I can put them into a frame. So if I want to group them, the way to do that is to either right click and click here on group selection or as you can see there's a shortcut that comes in very handy called control G and that is what I'm going to do now so I'm going to do control G here and as you can see now I have a group one that is containing my three layers so what exactly is happening when I'm actually grouping these layers well the first thing is that whenever I'm in the file, right, and I have a group of layers selected and I want to move this around, now all of the layers are gonna obviously move at the same time because they are part of the same layer. So what exactly happens to these layers once they are grouped? Well, it's a couple things really. The first one is that if I were to, let's say, want to move this around, uh, then if, as I am dragging this around the canvas, you can see that all of the layers that are within the group are moving within this section here, right? So that is one thing. And the other thing that is happening with regards to grouping is that if I were to say resize this, then essentially what is happening is all of the forms, all of the layers inside this group, it's as if it is scaling with the width and height adjustments, right? So if I, as you saw, move this a bit to the right, you can see that these are essentially resizing as I am scaling to the right. And if I do just a little bit of control Z to go back and I put this down as well, you can see the same effect is happening. That is one thing. And of course, if I were to tap on my K tab here on the keyboard to toggle the scale action here, right? So instead of moving with V, I am going to hit K for scale. And as you can see, if I were to scale this now, you can see that all of the items inside this group are moving proportionally. Of course, you can achieve the same result if you are just in your normal uh, moving mode here. And if I'm holding my shift key and I'm doing this, right? So this is the exact same thing. If I look now into each of these layers, it is proportionally scaled. Something else that you can do when you are handling groups like this is you can define the spacing sometimes between those items, right? So here right now we have the same distance between the circle and the triangle and also between the triangle and the square. I could easily just, first of all, move these around if I want to. So that's one thing you can do within the grouping. Also, you don't really have to have them grouped in order to do this, right? So if I were to have them ungrouped, I could do the exact same thing. Uh, and I can also define the spacing between them just like that without grouping. But I guess this is now also just uh, easier because you just have to click on one layer and now you have the controls here and all of these are selected at the same time. So it just makes uh, this level of management a little bit easier. And as you can see, you can even overlap them if you want and it just allows for that level of control. So if I do a bit of control Z to go back here, that is pretty much groups, right? So essentially you don't have a lot of control over let's say constraints or, or flex properties that we will see now with the, with, with the frames, but it does give you this sort of level of like basic control in terms of being able to scale things around, move them, and yeah, essentially that is, that is grouping. The second layer management method that we have available to us as mentioned earlier is framing. 
And in order for us to get a frame going, you can essentially, as similarly to what we did before, make sure to have all of them selected either through the layer management panel or just by doing a click selection, making sure all of them are within range. And now you can come here to this panel here. And I believe there is an option here to, to create a frame. Yes, frame selection. So this is essentially the same thing as group selection, but with an alt. And I almost even have a hard time finding this in the menu because I never uh, use this menu option here just because the shortcut is so handy. So if you do just control or command on Mac, control alt G, that will automatically give you a frame. And now all of these objects, similarly to how we had it in the group, are put together within one single layer. So now you'll ask me, okay, this looks very similar to what we had before. What exactly are the differences? So the first difference with respect to grouping is that, first of all, on the layer management panel, you will see that the symbol is slightly different. So if I bring the group back and I remove the frame and I add a group, instead you will see that the group has this sort of like a line symbol here with the spacing in between and this one sort of has like these straight lines that look almost like a hashtag and that's one way you can differentiate visually when you're looking at the layer panel what's a group and what's a frame but most importantly and I, i'm not going to do the the scaling here again because we're already familiar with that but the main one of the bigger differences between the two is that if i come here to my frame right and you can see that it has here the three layers that we wanted. If I now am going to resize this, like to the bottom or to the right, you can see that nothing is happening to the items or to the layers within it. Versus in the groups, what we had was that the objects are automatically scaling in proportion to those changes of the outer group. And this is happening because in frames, unlike in groups, we have a little bit more of complexity when it comes to how we define the relationship between the objects inside the frame. So we can, we can have a look at that by actually having, making sure that the frame is selected. I'm going to bring this back to its normal state here just for a second. And I'm going to bring your attention to the right section here. If you'll notice, we have very similar controls to what we could do earlier with the groups. Right? So I can just still take any of these and sort of move things around if I want to. I can adjust the distance between the items here. So if I do, for example, 80, I get that, that adjustment made instantly. The, one of the things that frames don't do that groups do, however, is scale proportionally. And frames don't do that for, for various reasons. But this is easily addressable if you click on this button here that says resize to fit. And that will make sure that the frame is going to be adjusting to the extra space that we just defined. However, this is not really the most important piece about, about frames and, and its difference with groups. So I'm gonna actually bring these actions back to how we had it in the beginning. The most important aspects here actually have to do with the relationship of like each individual item within the frame. And if we had the group here underneath it, just to show that difference again, I can group this and I have some group properties here based on, on some very simple relationships. But if I were to click on each of these, I don't have any advanced controls to essentially define what how this layer is going to behave or is, is resizing uh, you know, based on its position in the group. And the assumption here is that when you are grouping things, it's just going to automatically sort of act on a scale property such that when you are moving the group or adjusting the group and its width or height property, uh, you, you know, you're going to have this sort of scale factor. So that is a decision that is made for you whenever you are grouping. In frames, you have a little bit more control around that. And if we have a look now inside the frames here, I'm going to actually make the fill of the frame uh, white just so we can see that we're actually working within a frame. Uh, maybe that'll make it a bit clearer. But the most interesting bit here is that now if I look into the items here, I have constraints. And this essentially dictates uh, you know, how I want this object to position itself based on changes in the width or height adjustments of my frame. If you're in the context of product design, you know, you will have objects within frames that are continuously dynamically resizing. For example, if you have a cross device application that has to be rendered across 
multiple screen sizes and dimensions and you want to essentially dictate how the very same interface is going to you know behave across those different adjustments you know frames is something that can help you get there in fact whenever you are defining a breakpoint here or a sort of uh, you know an initial frame to get started with this is a frame for that reason because it's going to allow you to then whenever you have an object within it it will give you these properties as well so it is a frame for for that reason and of course you can't really have a group of nothing however you can have an empty frame because a frame in itself is an object that can't stand on its own so going back to this section here what i wanted to essentially show is that now these items allow me to define these properties of constraints so let's say that as i resize this frame bottom and right i'm going to decide for example let's say that the triangle is going to, to be staying sticky on the bottom right so by the way here we have left right left and right center and scale and here we have similar properties as well and you can easily toggle any of these through this visual right here it is quite handy once you get the jinx of it but just to show you essentially what's happening here let me also just let's say um, keep this to the right let's say now if i were to move this frame up and down you will see that now we have very specific properties that are dictating the relationship between these objects within the frame so it gives you a lot more power and actually one of the reasons why i do not use groups is that if i want to actually define the relationship to be or the definition of of these objects to be scale when i am moving this uh, or adjusting the outer frame what you could do to mimic that at that exact same experience is to just say okay i'm gonna grab all of these objects and here now it says mix because we've selected multiple objects that have different properties and so figma won't really give you a list but it will just tell you hey you have you know a couple of different properties here you can just select scale and essentially now what will happen is this will pretty much work as a group so if you'll recall now this is the exact same relationship or the exact same properties that the group was portraying when we had these organized inside a group layer. So this comes to say, and this is pretty much the main reason for me, whenever I am using groups, it, it, it feels like the, 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 the scaling factor is sort of already defined for me. If I know that I want these objects that I'm organizing to be scaled as I am proportionally resizing or adjusting the, you know, the, the actual proportions of, of my group layer, then that's fine. You could go ahead and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to create a group layer. I personally find myself not, not wanting to go in that direction that often when I am doing uh, product design uh, on my own projects. However, it could be something that for your particular use case is very common. But typically, you want to have access to these properties here for constraints. And this is a big win for us in terms of you know not just having like the constraints itself but to be able to to define you know higher level logic for your applications that relies on you know how these objects behave next to one another and one other really great aspect about having frames versus groups especially since the more recent updates is that you can easily then convert a frame selection into an auto layout if you don't have that already configured and what auto layout will essentially allow you to do is by the way you would have to just click on the frame here click on the plus for next to the auto layout button here and now you can see that the, the symbol here will change to tell you that this is an auto layout object and now you just have again a little bit more of configuration around the properties of your objects here and what this will allow you to do is essentially first of all define a direction for how these how these layers are organized so you can either have let's say vertical direction or horizontal direction and you know you can still have that same distance property here for the spacing between the objects that you've got going on uh, also you can introduce margin so let's say we want to have a 40 pixel margin uh, you know across all these objects done right now you have 40 pixels on the side and you know if we want to make this equal you can also do 40 here and now it's 40 across all the sides 
of your frame layers. And that's not it. You can also determine the, the, you know, the positioning here within the object. So this, this is pretty much uh, flex properties. If you're familiar with that from, from CSS and code, uh, you could essentially say uh, you know, that you want to have, maybe you want to have specific margins or specific, uh, in this case, actually padding. Uh, that's how, that's how it's, it's defined here. You could say, I want to have like 20, maybe only on the top, but in the bottom, I want to have 60. So it gives you very nice controls for that. And also it will allow you to define the positioning here. For us here, it's not that big of a difference because we just have these three items configured like that. So no matter what we do, it's gonna look the exact same way. However, let's say that, for example, these symbols wouldn't be the exact same width and height. So let's say I wanted to actually make this circle a little bit smaller, maybe let's say like 56, and I wanted to make the triangle bigger, let's say maybe like 160. Now you can see those properties sort of kick in. Uh, you can see now that these are, these are centered. And if I were to, for example, click here, you can see that now they are top aligned, bottom aligned, you know, I think right aligned and left aligned are the same still. But yeah, you get an idea of how this can be powerful for your own use case. And as well, you know, with the benefit of auto layout also comes the ability to easily add new layers within that auto layout. So if I were to, for example, say, okay, I wanna add more circles here, I could just do something like that and that will be you know, automatically configured inside the frame. So none of this stuff is anything that you can do with groups, right? So not only does groups just going to, is going to define for you that scale factor, that's something you may not wanna have, but it's also gonna deprive you from actually having access to all this much greater functionality that Figma is going to provide you in terms of the auto layout, also like these resizing controls, uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about that um, auto layout and resizing in my previous video where we looked at, you know, designing a table component that was very heavy uh, in terms of this, this resizing management. And so, yeah, that's essentially a primer on differences between groups and frames and why I personally never use groups. And that is pretty much it for today. I hope that you found this video useful and hopefully by now you will have a better understanding of the differences between groups and frames and Figma and that you'll be able to make better use of each of these within your product and design. If you did find it useful, don't forget to give it a like just to let me know. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas for follow-up videos or anything that we covered in this video, let me know in the comments section down below. I hope that you're well and stay safe and I will catch you in the next one.